is my child. Where is Diana? My newly born child. This is King Merlin, also the strongest huh? wizard in the kingdom. Impossible. She's mutated. <laughs> She inherited none of my magical abilities. I don't need a child like her. Although she has no magic, Diana possesses extraordinary physical strength. But because she doesn't have magical powers, Diana grows up in isolation. The reason for this stems from Merlin. Many years ago, Merlin had mastered supreme magic. Upon becoming king, he took many wives and had many children. Huh? He extremely disliked children with weak magical abilities like Diana. You should be grateful I even let you stay here. Any child who dares defy me will be expelled. So Diana huh? remained lonely. Huh? Also because of her terror and strength. Thus, no siblings wanted to play with Diana. The tragedy worsened when Diana's biological mother, the only person close to her, passed away. Now, who dares to take care of her? Who would leave a poor girl like that? I will take care of her. Besides, Aurora, my daughter, really wants a sibling. So Diana has a family again. <laughs> Come here, look at this! Huh? No matter how much trouble Diana causes, <laughs> Aurora will use her healing magic to fix the consequences of her foster sister's actions. She also stands up to protect Diana when she is scolded, and because of that, huh? I will protect this new family at all costs. As Diana grew up, huh? she discovered a truth. The girl Diana has grown up. I adopted her only because of her strength. She will eliminate her siblings, so you can become the emperor. How could that be? The only family Diana had was also a facade. <laughs> I had no idea. Diana, please listen to me. From then on, the super strong princess lived a reckless life, using her strength to punish the wicked in quite brutal ways. Hey, you're causing trouble again. What do you want, Big Brother Flame? No wonder some are quite afraid of her. Uh, mm, Merlin will have an announcement tonight. You better be back on time. I don't care. I will never return to that place. Just saying, how can I not go back? I might get expelled by Dad. You understand? <sighs> kind of get it, but... Huh? <laughs> Deal with those guys for me, then we can continue our chat. Always up to me. Fighting, breaking, bullying. <laughs> all done. My hands are all dirty now. All right, then. You don't have to pay today. Wow, your mix today tastes so good. Because it was mixed with this, an emotion amplifying drug. That drug made Diana's emotions uncontrollable. <laughs> the prince and princess, who is the best, with the strongest magical abilities, will be my successor. Those without magic, weak like Diana, then. Then what? I don't need any titles. Don't threaten me. <laughs> Such insolence angered her siblings, mainly to win Merlin's favor. Please, forgive my sister. She's just impulsive. Forgive? Look what you did to my face. No forgiveness. You will be expelled. I will erase you from the family tree. Fine by me. I've been waiting for this day. No. What are you doing, Diana? Farewell! Ha! Since then, Diana became a wandering knight throughout the kingdom, finding joy in punishing the wicked. Cheeky! Sister, calm down. We can explain. Be gone! Thank you. I'm the wizard Bruce. I wander the kingdom to make a living. My magic is a bit weak, so... Not interested. <laughs>
Wait, how can I thank you? Told you, no need. Go away. Yet somehow, <laughs> Bruce kept following Diana around. <laughs> Why keep following me? Because, because I want to thank you. Also, I admire your strength. If I follow you, I won't get bullied anymore. But I'm going into the bathroom! Oh! Oh! Save huh? me! Where is my huh? dear savior? Here, here! Oh! What's going on? We were just rehearsing a play? Oh, my house! Oh, I'm sorry. Let me fix it. Let me use magic to fix it. But you have to let me follow you. Fine, fine. Watch this. Half a day later. <laughs> Done now. Why so long? I told you my object transformation magic is weak. But now you have to let me follow you, right? Having promised, <laughs> Diana had to keep her word. But Bruce was truly a burden. <laughs> into trouble. What's with the troublemaker telling you? What can I do? Huh? But Bruce helped Diana huh? solve the consequences she caused. Huh? <laughs> You're so cool! Cool? Not as cool as Diana. Did you see how she threw that thug? <laughs> My father huh? disowned me because my magic is very weak. That's why I admire strong people like you. Bruce respects <laughs> me just like Aurora. A close friendship <laughs> thus slowly blossomed. <laughs> but then one day... <laughs> found you. What do you want now, big brother? You kept me out of the royal family. Right, so I can take revenge on you for ruining my handsome face. A clash erupted between two one siblings. <laughs> Not good, too strong. Huh? Isn't that... Huh? Diana immediately <laughs> overpowered Flame. She hit him so hard, he lost his memory. <laughs> What's with Flame's attitude? She was wanted for daring to mess with Merlin's favorite. My muscles aren't this rough, are they? <sighs> no more jokes, Diana. We can't live like this anymore. We have to overthrow Merlin. Merlin's supreme <laughs> magic isn't in his body, but in a magical necklace. He hides it very carefully in the palace. We must take it. <laughs> Merlin disowned you, making people like us suffer. Help me, Diana. Mm. The room is sealed by super strong magic. This armor, I created it over decades. It will enhance the body, resist all magic. Then why don't you wear it? It helps me resist magic, but my magic is still weak. How can it become stronger? Fine, but turn into a crowd. This armor doesn't suit me. Diana had to wait a long time for Bruce to modify the armor. This is... Huh? Done now. Try it out. <laughs> huh? Oh my. It seems your physical strength has enhanced the crown's capabilities. You'll need a new dress. The two quickly infiltrated the palace to carry out their plan. Diana, I'll stay here, okay? Find the necklace and come back here to me. Diana easily rampaged thanks to her super strength and knowledge of huh? the palace's layout. All guards, princess, and princesses in her way were defeated. Hmm? 
Here it is. If Bruce is right, then it's here. <laughs> this must be the magical protection. Diana easily passed through the magical seal thanks to the crown. Huh? This necklace, it's too powerful. Should I really give it to Bruce? Remembering the strange huh? signs around Bruce, Diana began to doubt. She decided huh? to go to Merlin's study huh? to look for records about him. Huh? Diana! What's that, Aurora? Huh? Uh, nothing, Dad. <sighs> My God, what are you doing? No, not what you think. Meanwhile, Merlin had discovered the necklace was missing. There it is! No, no, I can't explain. <gasps> no one bothered to listen to Diana, because they were all busy <gasps> catching her to earn Merlin's favor. <gasps> They've surrounded us here. Give me the necklace now. <gasps> no! This is the mastermind! Uh, huh? Bruce? Indeed, <laughs> Bruce was the son Merlin had expelled long ago. He had been using Diana from the start. <laughs> I suspected and found documents about you in the study. Don't think you can use me. I'll hand you over in exchange for my freedom. But when Diana was not paying attention, Bruce used his magic. I now possess the supreme magic. Hand it over to me, Diana. Well, I still prefer wearing armor. Thanks to the supreme magical <laughs> necklace, along with the magic-resistant armor, no one was his match anymore. <laughs> Without the necklace, what magic do I have left? <laughs> now, I'll take the magic of all of you. Aurora couldn't escape either. No! Bruce was now too strong. Diana couldn't withstand him. And Aurora tried to use her healing magic. To help her sister defeat the wizard Bruce. <laughs> Diana saved us! What a wonder woman! Well done, daughter! Hand huh? me the necklace! You've been hiding all this time? Huh? You even divided our siblings! <laughs> when the magical flow was released, it would automatically huh? choose a kind, deserving person huh? to possess the supreme magic. Huh? Aurora! Aurora is our new queen! <laughs> but what about you, Diana? I don't care for titles. I just like freedom. Besides, who would oppose you anyway? <laughs> <laughs> Thus, Queen Aurora would usher in a new era. And Diana, she would continue to live her life as a free knight. <laughs> when people suddenly lost something precious, they often fell into despair and agony. <laughs> the tale of Princess Sophia served as proof of this. <laughs> to follow the stories unfolding, subscribe to Woe Fairy Tales channel to find out the outcome. From the day she was born, Sophia never lacked anything. <laughs> she indulged in endless pleasures, neglecting her royal duties, much to the dismay of the king and queen. <gasps> Whenever her father fell ill, Sophia would be busy playing, forgetting to inquire about his well-being, until the kingdom's sorceress reminded her to visit. Tomorrow is your 18th birthday, and the whole family will be going on an outing. <laughs> How boring! But sadly, that trip turned out to be the last time Sophia would be with her parents. The whole family was attacked and robbed by bandits. <laughs> Sophia was gravely injured, and both the king and queen lost their lives. Father, mother, wake up! You filthy folks! You've harmed my family! I despise you! Hearing the dreadful news, the kingdom's sorceress rushed to the scene and couldn't help but feel sorrowful. 
quickly. Take the princess away from here. After the sudden departure of her parents, Sophia seemed to turn into a different person. She became irritable and difficult with everyone. You filthy servants! Leave this place! Mm. Princess, calm down. Come outside with me to soothe yourself. While walking, Sophia spotted a girl who looked exactly like her, named Grace, stealing a piece of bread. You! Dare to have a face like mine? Catch her for stealing! Please forgive me. I just want to save my severely ill brother at home. He's been hungry for days. I love poor and despicable creatures like you! Hmm. Princess, spare her. Huh. She's also a victim of circumstances. <sighs> Don't speak further! Take her away! And so, Grace was taken to prison. Every day, Sophia visited the place where Grace was held, looking at her and the memories of the bandits who ruined her family resurfaced. It's because of people like you that my family is in ruins! It's all your fault! <laughs> Please forgive me! Suddenly, the sky turned pitch black. Thunder rumbled, and lightning struck between Sophia and Grace, causing both of them to be thrown back. <gasps> Quickly uh. take the princess away from here. Mm -hmm. After a while, Grace woke up, exclaiming in Sophia's voice. What's happening? Why am I now Grace? <laughs> Sophia had turned into a poor, ugly girl imprisoned in the dungeon. Release me! I am the true princess! While Grace became the <laughs> beloved princess, adored by all. Grace, our family is in dire straits, forcing Grace to act this way. <gasps> Release her. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I am the princess of this castle. <laughs> you deceitful soldiers, you will pay for this. <laughs> Back at home, Grace's parents <gasps> hurried to the side of a little boy and started crying. It turned out to be Grace's severely <laughs> ill brother. Sister Grace, please stop stealing food. I can endure it. Sophia realized that Grace did those <gasps> wicked deeds only for her family. Take everything valuable and give it to me. <laughs> please, give us more time. <laughs> <laughs> if the dead isn't paid in three days, I'll take this girl. <laughs> never. Even if we have to sell everything, we will never do such a thing. Sophia realized that no matter how poor they were, Grace's parents still showered her with love and protected their child fiercely. She reflected on her past life of wealth and how she had been consumed by material pursuits, neglecting her family. Such simple happiness, which Sophia had never experienced before. In three days, you must bring the full amount to repay the debt, or I'll take her away. Grace's parents were extremely worried, working tirelessly day and night. Sophia reflected on her past actions. She had never helped Grace's parents with anything, only causing them more trouble. After deep contemplation, Sophia rushed to help Grace's parents with their work. Gradually, Sophia forgot her princess identity and integrated into the lives of the poor people, earning money with Grace's parents and caring for her brother. The three days had come to an end, and the family finally collected the owed money and brought it to Felix's house. Grace's parents and Sophia entered, seeing many poor people weeping. Please have mercy and reduce the tax. We're already struggling. <coughs> huh? 
Right on time. How dreadful. Sophia handed the money to Felix and noticed a golden pun and a precious gemstone that the queen and king often carried with them while alive. The items were displayed in Felix's cabinet. Sophia snatched back the money and grabbed the queen's golden comb. Why do you have this comb? It belonged to the queen. How dare you? He's the one who harmed the king and queen of this kingdom, abusing his power to oppress the poor. We must stand against him. <gasps> That's right! Arrest him for his crimes! Everyone rose up and attacked Felix and his soldiers, causing a riot. <laughs> Felix angrily drew his sword to attack Grace and Sophia's parents. Sophia immediately led Grace's parents and fled straight from the mansion. Felix swung his sword towards Grace's parents, but Sophia quickly pushed them aside and caught it. <laughs> Ah! The old sorceress and Grace arrived on the scene. Quickly, capture that criminal! Let me go! Let me go! Father, mother, it's me, Grace, your daughter. Only then did the old sorceress <laughs> laugh gently and wave her hand. And lightning struck Sophia and Grace again, causing both to fall to the ground. Sophia and Grace oh. woke up, returning to their original bodies. I did this to help you understand that not all poor people are wicked. You need a multifaceted perspective when judging situations. I have observed your time with them, and I feel that you have truly changed. <laughs> and I asked Grace for help without revealing the truth. <laughs> Thank you for helping me find the right path. I apologize for my thoughtless actions towards you. <laughs> Forget about it. You also helped my parents a lot. <laughs> From then on, everything returned to normal. <laughs> Sophia no longer harbored prejudices against the poor. She lived harmoniously, embracing kindness and empathy. The entire kingdom <laughs> overflowed with prosperity and happiness. <laughs> Do you know that our world always exists parallel to the world of magical wizards? Each wizard, upon entering the academy, would be challenged by summoning a magical creature, the Unicorn. Their status and magical abilities would correspond to this creature. Being admitted to the Unicorn Academy was undoubtedly the greatest honor in one's lifetime. However, apart from the purebred wizard families, only a few exceptional commoners had the privilege. In Ella's village, everyone believed that her talented older sister would be one of the rare few to study at the Unicorn Academy this year. Ella was no less skilled than other ordinary girls, even a bit more. But when compared to her sister, the difference was immense. Despite feeling self-pity, Ella never resented her sister. In fact, she admired and was proud of her. Sister, with your talent, you'll surely receive an invitation to the Unicorn Academy this year. If that's true, I'll send you many letters about the Academy. You promise, right? When the time comes, don't get so engrossed in studying that you forget about me. However, in the end, not only Ella or her sister, but also all uh -huh. the villagers were astonished huh? when Ella was the huh? one invited to join the academy, not her sister. The shock and disappointment prevented her sister from talking to Ella until the day she started her studies. Ella entered the Unicorn Academy with a heavy heart, mixed with a hint of anxiety. Her worry and confusion grew as the magical classification ceremony went on. The elemental unicorns appeared one by one, filling the air with wondrous magic. Each student who successfully summoned a magical creature would have a corresponding horn appear on their head, reflecting their elemental affinity. Especially the radiant unicorn created by Selena, a purebred wizard. There was no doubt that this unicorn would be the highest ranked one at the ceremony today.
Ella was the last to summon her creature, and she was anxious and frightened when nothing seemed to happen. People were tired after the long ceremony, and their patience was wearing thin. If nothing happened, Ella would have to pack her things and return to her previous life. She remembered hurtful comparisons people had made. What's going on? Is there any mistake? Or did Ella cheat to steal her sister's spot? I do have feelings, you know. Please, anything, just let the unicorn appear! Her plea seemed to be heard by the heavens. From the sky, an object plummeted down at a terrifying speed, causing a commotion in the ceremony. Oh my goodness! It, 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 it's the rainbow unicorn? It's the unicorn, with the most notable power. What? It doesn't even have the horn yet. Even Ella, she didn't grow an extra horn. It's because Ella's unicorn is injured. Everything will be fine in a couple of weeks. In the following days, Ella received a different kind of attention than usual. <laughs> Even Celia, who didn't like Ella, put on a friendly face and invited Ella to join her group. There's a race this weekend. You and your unicorn, James Wright, join us. I... I'm sorry, but I have other plans. Indeed, Ella was hiding a dreadful secret. James, the unicorn she summoned, wasn't actually a unicorn. Listen, I know you're not the creature I summoned, but it's all done now. Can you please help me stay at the academy a little longer? Contrary to Ella's friendliness, James huh? was uncooperative. <laughs> Before the magic test, Ella led James outside hoping to connect with him and gain his cooperation. However, James not only disobeyed... ...but also hurt Ella. Becoming the subject of ridicule for those who happened to witness it. James managed to escape Ella's control crossing the Academy's boundaries and ending up in a room with aggressive unicorns. He didn't expect that Ella would appear, risking her life to protect him. The wounds James inflicted were still visible on Ella. Yet, she cared for James with patience and tenderness. I'm sorry, it's because of my incompetence that you're involved in this. But tomorrow it will be over. After the test, when I can't perform magic, I'll confess everything and leave. You'll be free too, James. Ella couldn't have anticipated that those words, along with her gentle actions, would touch James's heart. The next day, James agreed to let Ella ride him, and even performed magic to help hide her abilities. From that moment, they became the best of friends. Ella's status also soared as a result. What's her talent, anyway? Can't even get a horn, and that creature doesn't even look like a unicorn anymore. For the first time, Ella experienced the glow of being the main character, and she couldn't bear to lose it. Three days ago, Ella received an anonymous letter. Huh? It stated huh? that the Dark Mage living in the Forbidden huh? Forest had a solution to her problem. I can't resort to cheating like this. Her fear led her to a selfish decision. Huh? Huh? I... I want to have a unicorn horn! After following the instructions, a horn indeed appeared on James's head. <laughs> However, after that, James was no longer the gentle creature he used to be. James? James? What's wrong with you? 
Huh? High-level wizards struggled to restrain James. Huh? But it wasn't an easy task, especially when the condition seemed to spread to other huh? unicorns. Ella! What on earth have you done? Bring him under control! James's memories of Ella's kindness woke him up. Seizing the opportunity, the group of wizards captured James yes. and the mindless unicorns. <laughs> Allowing the magical tribunal to step in and take them away. Ella realized that one of the members of the tribunal was the one who tricked her into attaching the horn to James. Mm. Huh? Huh? Don't be foolish, Ella! That's impossible! Hurry and lead them away! Alone, Ella couldn't do much. She cried mm. out, seeking help from the other students. Huh? What are you all doing? How could you let them be taken away like that? They are our good friends! How could you forget all the good times we had? To us, they might be pets, but to them, we're everything! Selena, you too? You don't care about your unicorn, Selena? I... I... I will never give up on James! Never! You are not alone! Me, we'll help me you. too! The students created chaos together, allowing Ella to break free and escape with James. Without hesitation, James took off with great speed, carrying Ella on his back. <laughs> ha! You can't escape! Fortunately, a catastrophe was averted as James and Ella found themselves cornered, with the Dark Wizard about to capture them. Huh? <laughs> Running away! Why stop now? James, it's all my fault. I've hurt you. I let my own interests blind me. You've always been my best friend, whether you're a unicorn or not. In their final moment, Ella decisively removed the horn that didn't belong huh? to James, huh? confirming her affirmation. Strangely enough, that action not only restored James's original appearance, but also sprouted a pair of large wings, lifting both of them into the air. It turned out that James wasn't a unicorn, but a Pegasus Prince. During the battle against the forces of darkness, he had been wounded and lost his way to the Unicorn Academy. The wound caused by the darkness sealed his magic powers and memories temporarily. When the horn containing dark magic was attached, it inadvertently reactivated his powers. When Ella removed it, the power surged once again. James purified the darkness, restoring his own sanity and the minds of the remaining unicorns. Ella stepped forward, admitting her mistakes to everyone and acknowledging that she wasn't worthy of studying here. Summoning a spirit beast is through the bond of friendship with a wizard. Although James isn't a unicorn, what you and James have done is more than enough to prove your capabilities here. But what about James? Can he scare you too? You don't have to worry about that. Poseidon and Medusa, James's parents, have entrusted him to the Academy until he's strong enough to take over the throne. <laughs> From then on, they continued to be close friends, huh? and they even built a sometimes turbulent but beautiful relationship with Selena. Today's story concludes. Thank you for your support. Each view is a tremendous encouragement for us to create more interesting new stories. Don't forget to subscribe to Woa Fairy Tales to help us reach 1 million subscribers soon. Now, share with Woa Fairy Tales your emotions after watching today's story. 
See you in the upcoming episode. Where are those little spirits touching the hand of that beautiful girl mm -hmm. so brilliant? Does she have any magical powers? Let's find out with fairy tales now. Once upon a time, in the village, there was a very beautiful lady named Lena. Although Lena is the only daughter of the village chief, she's not only unarrogant, but also extremely honest, always enthusiastic to help people around. Therefore, she is always loved by everyone. Lately, for no reason, her small village has suffered a long drought. The land is dry, so food is increasingly scarce. Mm hmm? Hmm. <sighs> uh, even though it was customary for her father to go to the temple to ask the goddess to bless the people, this time, there was no change uh, at all. Lena was restless mm -hmm. and decided to join her father <laughs> in praying again. <laughs> However, when the two just walked in front of the temple gate, suddenly, Black clouds came, covering the sky. Not only that, when her father had just set foot in the palace, suddenly, a lightning struck the sky, carrying the bright light and turning her father into a stone statue. Oh no, Dad! Why did this happen? Lena had just finished speaking. Hestia, the goddess of the temple, appeared to her in a proud, serious manner. Ha! Huh, don't cry and beg for anything else. It was your father who had committed great contempt for the gods, so you all have to suffer the whole things. Many days ago, when your father came to the temple, he knocked down the spiritual fire that cultivated long ago way too unreservedly. Not only that, he dared to put out my flame with his sword. This is unacceptable, and he has to pay for what he's done. Goddess, please forgive my father and people. My father must have just inadvertently caused it without even knowing its importance. So, please show mercy to my father and the villagers so that they can overcome this long tribulation. They've worked so hard in the sun, used up all their food reserves and had to travel to many places. Therefore, I also willingly give everything to save him and everyone. Seeing Lena's prayerful sincerity, Hestia's angry face gradually changed. All right, I'll make a deal with you as a way for you to make atonement for that clumsy father and save everyone. You help me gather the spirits of water, fire, and light, the elements of the fairy forest, so that I may have more magic to cultivate my powers. When you finish the quest, I will spare your father as well as the others. Lina thanked Hestia and went home. She picked up her belongings and took her beloved father's sword and set out. Throughout the difficult road, Lina finally found the gate to the fairy forest. <gasps> However, the god guarding the gate was determined not to let her through. Please let me get into the forest. I need to find the elemental spirits to help the Hestia goddess restore magic, as well as save the lives of my people and my father. Well, an ordinary person like you can't set foot in this land. Leave! Then the god summoned the sword in his hand and threatened Lena. I'm sorry, sir, but my people and my father are in danger, so I have to be rude to you. So, Lena tried to pull out her father's sword and come up against the attack of the god. Only after seeing Lena's sword, the god was surprised and stopped fighting with him. How do you get the sword? This is the gift I gave to a brave man of great heart who helped the people of this forest. It was my father. But my father was turned into stone after committing unknowingly a sin against the goddess Hestia. I beg you to help me find the three spirits in the fairy forest. Turns out, you're his descendant. That explained why you are strong, and you can use this divine sword. Hmm. Alright, I'll let you in. But you should remember that only worthy person of pure purpose and honest heart can gather three spirits and have the ultimate source of magic to cultivate. Thank you very much. I got it. Seeing Lena's eyes filled with optimistic and hope, the god immediately took her into the forest, where the three spirits were shining brightly. <gasps> Elemental spirits, I am here for no evil purpose but to ask for your help to save the innocent people and my poor father. Therefore, may you understand my plea and join me in returning to the small village.
The elemental spirits looked towards the divine sword and gradually understood the deep <laughs> prayer, hurriedly shining brightly on her hand. Lena was very happy, thanked the guardian god, and quickly returned. Hmm. When she arrived at the temple, Lena immediately handed over three spirits to the goddess Hestia. <laughs> However, the goddess did not directly touch the power source, but used a divine bag to carry them. Lena felt a little strange when she saw the three spirits gradually change color, but she did not have time to ask anything. Suddenly, there was dark smoke around the temple, and the goddess of fire, mm. Hestia, was in front of her, immediately forming the demon king. He threw yeah. Lena's father to prevent her from ruining the transformation of the spirits. <laughs> the elemental spirits are finally in my hands. Now, no one can accomplish my plan to take over this land. It turned out that before that, the Demon King had hypnotized Lena's father with his sword to extinguish the goddess's fire that weakened her, and then was kept captive. After that, the Demon King also caused people's lives miserable. Knowing that Lena was a talented person with an honest heart, he decided to disguise as the goddess Hestia and asked Selena for the three elemental spirits from the fairy forest. After possessing three spirits in his hand, he immediately disables the magic of them with the magic bag and transforms them into dark magic. Seeing the three spirits gradually controlled, Lena took the opportunity and tried to retrieve the bag. Lena embraced the three spirits in her arms, but by the moment, they were completely transformed and conquered by the Demon King. Not only that, the Demon King also quickly controlled the elemental spirits to return to him and began to use his power to destroy everyone. <laughs> Seeing what was going on, Lena was terrified and in pain of not being able to save her father and the people. I did my best, but the strength of a man as ordinary as I could not fight against the Demon King. I'm so useless. No, Lena, you fought bravely. I'm sure you won't give up so easily. Dad, is that you? Only in response to Lena, there was only silence from the statue but she was still trying to motivate herself. You can't answer me right now, I know, but those words have given me the extra motivation to fight and the determination not to let it end like this. Then, Lena struggled drawing her sword and rushed to the demon. During the battle, she tried to resist and dodge the demon's moves and used her agility to cut towards the three spirits. The three spirits gradually restored their power, shifted from the dark color to their inherent quintessential beauty, and helped Lena beat the Demon King. No! The Demon King finally vanished, and the fire goddess Hestia was released from captivity. <laughs> then, the goddess of fire gathered up the three spirits and helped David, Lena's father, become a human again. Lena, on this journey you've proved to us courageous indomitable and sacrificial spirit for others therefore i give you the water spirit and hope you can rule this land with me for the better <laughs> my pleasure lena then happily joined her father in using the water spirit that had just been given to bring water to the people in the end lena and everyone lived together happily warmly and richly forever after why did the princess touch the hole? That lady suddenly becomes such a beautiful god. Let's find out. In the realm of the sun goddess, there was a good princess named Sunny, who was the only daughter of the king and the late queen. She always wore the royal necklace, a family heirloom, with the hope that she would become a great queen as she had wished. Mm. However, no matter how hard she tried to be strong, her father always thought that she was just a weak girl and left the heavy work for the wizard general. Moreover, the successor of the kingdom was often a wise, consensuous man who could possess the scepter of light, which a part of the power of the sun goddess's heart to maintain the light of the kingdom. So the king thought a lot and went to the temple without letting Sunny go. I understand my father is worried about me and my people, so he cannot assume the responsibility of carrying this kingdom to me. And if I let the wizard general in charge, he must be the guy who my father trusted a lot, and I will try to support him. While Sunny was thinking, she suddenly heard a loud noise coming from the temple. And the sky suddenly darkened for no reason. When she arrived, she saw her father and the wizard general, who was asleep 
and the goddess got angry and left. What happened to my father and the sun goddess? Because the king wanted you to be his successor. So the sun goddess didn't agree and got angry like that. The king always silently observed your efforts and decided to propose you to be the one who ruled of the scepter of light in order to maintain the prosperity of the kingdom. However, the sun goddess was very angry because she thought that you was a girl, not in accordance with the old custom. So the goddess punished your father, destroyed the scepter of light, and took away the life of our kingdom. If you want to save the king and kingdom, you must find the sun goddess at the top of the perilous mountain and bring back the scepter of light. As it turns out, my father always been quietly sacrificed for me. So, I'm going to go see the goddess and prove my true strength, and I'm determined not to let you regret this decision. After saying that, Sunny decided to go on the road, trying to overcome all the obstacles to reach the top of the mountain, the place where the sun goddess was supposed to reside. While climbing the mountain, she saw a fox fainted on the road from starvation due to the scarcity of food from the disappearance of the sun. Seeing the poor fox, Sunny rushed to get some of her food to help him stay awake. Appreciating Sunny's kindness, the fox immediately brought her to the front of the huge gate, the residence of the sun goddess. You must be here to see the sun goddess. However, if you want to meet the goddess, you must answer my wise question first. Yes, please, ask the question. You're a brave little girl. So answer me. All things on earth are like animals. People always try to avoid conflict and fight to maintain a peaceful life. However, what alive will beat, what doesn't beat will die. Sunny hmm? thought for a while but hmm. could not think of an answer, and unconsciously, she touched her heirloom <gasps> softly. <laughs> that's right. The answer is the heart, because that's the source of life for every species. If it doesn't beat every second, it can't survive. That's exactly right. <laughs> The gate showed the way for Sunny, but when Sunny had just set foot inside, she was suddenly attacked by the sun goddess in anger. Without saying an explanation, Sunny tried her best to evade the goddess's magic, but is still defeated. While Sunny was cornered, she saw the goddess holding her chest, which seemed very painful. As it turned out, she realized that the goddess had lost a part of her heart. So she tried to run so fast that she put her necklace in the void on the goddess's chest and held her in her lap, filling Sunny's heart through hugs and gifts. The goddess gradually calmed down and returned to the beauty form as before. <laughs> Thank you, Princess Sunny. You helped me recover my strength with love. And in the last journey, I've also known how good and strong you are. Will you then not be angry with me and help my father recover and bring light to all things in my kingdom? I'm sorry. It's not because of you that I got angry and turned dark like this. However, I want you to learn what the truly good people are and to find out the reason behind this and defeat that evil force to help people. Therefore, even though I am weak now, I will grant you the scepter of light, which will help you to obtain the ultimate magic. Hmm. However, if you use the power of the scepter to save your father's life, you will have no more magic to save the people and vice versa. Hmm. Standing in front of the great and difficult mm. decisions of life, Sunny contemplated and thought, hypnotized along the way back to the kingdom. It's difficult to make the decision to choose either one, as the sun goddess says, because for me, dad are the only one who has raised me. Therefore, I cannot afford to watch my father weaken and pass away. Only I also understand that when there is a lack of sunlight, all things in the kingdom live in misery. Even their food is increasingly scarce and robbed by soldiers. <coughs> Seeing the unusual happen in front of her eyes, Sunny hurried back to the palace, but had just arrived at the place where the wizard general blocked the road to arrest and seize the scepter. <laughs> it's worth for me to wait. Just in a short time, you brought back the scepter of light. It turned out that long ago, the king knew that even though the wizard general was an agile guy, but evil-minded person, quietly sucking up the wealth of the people, so the king could not bring him to the throne. So when the king achieved Sunny as his successor, the wizard general was furious and sought to defeat the king to seize the scepter of light. 
While the Sun Goddess needed absolute concentration to recharge the Scepter Light with magical energy and also the weakest defense, the Wizard General silently <laughs> intended to take the Scepter from the Goddess. However, when the Wizard General touched the Scepter, his evil grim directly affected and infected the evil with weapons, and even the heart of the Goddess was darkened. <laughs> Seeing that scene, the King hurriedly stopped the Wizard, but during the contraction, the Scepter was broken as well, as the King was seriously wounded. Turns out you're the one behind all this? Mm -hmm. My father and I have trusted you all this time! <laughs> it's too late now, Princess! Now that I have the Scepter of Light in my hands, you must all submit to my command. <laughs> After that, mm -hmm. he used the Scepter to create a lot of sun throughout the kingdom, with the intention of making people work all day long to redeem it. No, I can't make his ambitions come true. I must continue to fight for the people, for my father. Ah. <sighs> Sunny tried to move away from the soldiers. The wizard general panicked, using the scepter to stop Sunny, but suddenly, the sun in Sunny's hand shone and dazzled him. Not only that, the magic that he just shot at her was flushed back and caused him to melt into a cloud of smoke. However, the power of the sun was too strong to Sunny, so she was forced to hold the sun in her hands to create pressure, causing them to break. But this was equivalent to, she had to sacrifice her life. Because my father and people, I determined to sacrifice myself to become the light of the sun and to leave the scepter of light to my father so that they may all live together in peace. Finally, Sunny hugged the sun in her heart, shone brightly in front of many people. While everyone was mourning her departure, a light suddenly shone from the ashes, and Sunny appeared as a light bearer. Sunny! Daddy! <laughs> Sunny, I know you're just a little girl, mm. but you've proven in your journey and sacrifice is that you're a person mm. of both mind and vision, and fit for the scepter of light. Mm. Therefore, I hope you will maintain the prosperity of the kingdom on my behalf. Thank you, Dad, and everybody so much. I also understand that whatever our origin or gender is, if we try hmm. hard enough and take action, everyone will understand what our potential is. And then, under Sunny's guidance, the kingdom once again returned to its inherent serenity, and people lived happily ever after. Ah, the powerful trident was flying towards the little princess. What's huh? happening? Let's follow Boa huh? Fairy Tales with today's story. Huh? Once upon a time at Atlantic Sea, where Atlan the Sea King ruled, he lived happily and peacefully with the queen and his daughter, Princess Marie. The peaceful life was expected to last forever, until Esther the Sea Witch rebelled and betrayed. She was always jealous with the power of Atlan the king, so she practiced dark magic then intended to bring her force to attack him sneakily. When Princess Marine turned one year old, the king and the queen held a lavish party deep under the ocean to celebrate her birthday. While everyone was having fun with the party, Esther took the chance and got there, using the dark magic to attack the king. Timely realizing that, the queen rushed there took the attack for her husband, and got seriously injured. The king angrily summoned his trident and used all of his power to defeat huh? Esther. <laughs> then he detained her in the dark dungeon, not allowing her to get out forever. For taking a critical hit for the king, the queen didn't make it through and passed away. Princess Maureen became motherless right on her first birthday. After the queen passed away, the king stayed unmarried to raise her daughter. Even he really loved Maureen, but he always displayed a cold attitude to teach her strictly. Maureen was more and more like her mother as she grew up, making the king really hurtful each time he looked at his daughter. I'm a useless husband when not being able to protect my beloved wife. So, he educated Maureen rigidly to make her stronger in every situation. 
Even huh? when he was not beside her, she could protect <laughs> herself. <laughs> Marine, you should practice hard. Don't be lazy. Only the one with great effort is worth owning the trident. <laughs> From the day Mom passed away, Dad has always found the reasons to control me. Am I really useless and hateful in his eyes like that? Marine felt really sad. She became with Ron and wasn't close to anyone. And she had only a friend. That was the lantern fish. That fish was always beside to encourage her. On her 18th birthday, Maureen was so excited that she accidentally hit the table which had a birthday cake. The table fell down, making everything broken. Maureen, can you be more careful? Look at what you did! You ruined the party! Because of me? Everything is always because of me? If my birth annoys you like that, why did you let me come into this world? Then, she cried and ran outside. Huh? Little princess, don't cry. I think the king was just angry for a moment. My father just yells at me all the time. He never recognized what I had done. He doesn't love me. Hmm, I have an idea. There is a magical pearl inside this bedroom. Legend said that pearl was the flame of the ocean, which helped the creatures to maintain their lives. Or you just try to go there and take it. With that pearl, you will become really powerful, and the king will recognize you. But will my father king be angry with it? <laughs> it's alright. You are his heir. You just take it a little bit sooner. Being in the trap of the lantern fish, Maureen and the fish snuck into her father's room when he wasn't there. Right after holding the pearl on her hand, the lantern fish immediately knocked her out and stole the pearl. When Maureen woke up, she could only see her father beside. He looked really worried for her. Father, father, the lanternfish stole the pearl from me. It's all because of me for being too foolish when believing him. <laughs> what do I have to do now? Uh, that's good when you're all right about the pearl. I will find the way to take it back. Turns out that the lanternfish was the disciple of Este. After successfully taking the pearl, it immediately brought the pearl there to rescue Este. Having the pearl, Este casted a spell to create a spooky flame burning from the bottom of the ocean, and no one could extinguish it. Then, the creatures got weaker gradually. The Sea King was not an exception. He was affected by the flames, making his power decrease. Taking the chance, Este attacked him. The king tried his best to rush there to protect his daughter and hold off Este. Maureen, run away! Run quickly to the Sea of Ice and land the Heart of Icy! Only its power can save Atlantis now! Although Maureen really loved her father, Maureen knew that that was the last way to help everyone. So she had to wipe the tears away and run away. Maureen kept swimming far away. When she thought she was safe, the lanternfish suddenly appeared from behind to attack her. Turns out that it had always been following her to eliminate her. Maureen was really angry and wanted to fight back, but the lanternfish attacked her continuously with a fireball, making her really painful. Maureen got injured. In the most dangerous moment, she came up with an idea. She threw the starfish towards its eyes. The starfish sticked on its eyes and the lanternfish was totally disoriented. Taking the chance, she found a sharp shell to cut down the magic lantern on its forehead and run away. Successfully lost it, the princess kept swimming until she reached the sea of ice. She was blocked by the two magical guardian fish at the gate of the ice sea. Ice King! 
Please have mercy on me and lend me the heart of the icy to save my father and the poor residents of Atlantic. I will give you anything I have to exchange for it. No matter how she cried and begged, the Ice King still didn't show up and agreed to help her. Not giving up, she patiently sat in front of the palace for three more days. Until the cold and the tiredness made her exhausted and fainted. When she woke up, Maureen could see the Ice King in front of her. She was really surprised when seeing the Ice King mm -hmm. as a handsome young king. She had thought that he was an old and difficult king. I agree to lend you the Ice Heart, but in exchange, after saving your father, you have to come back here and become my slave for the rest of your life. Do you agree? Yes, yes, thank you so much. I will use the rest of my life to repay you. The Ice King was really satisfied. He brought the Ice Heart along with him and went back to Atlantis with her. Mm. Stepping inside the palace, she was huh? really surprised when seeing mm. as in nowhere. Huh? She could only see her father was being detained painfully inside the burning cage. Marina and the Ice King quickly went there and used the Ice Heart to rescue the king. <laughs> right at that moment, Esti appeared from the behind and hold the trident up, intending to perform a sneak attack at the Ice King. Seeing that, Marvin quickly took the critical hit for the Ice King. Too angry with the meanness and the wickedness of Esti, the Ice King stepped up to fight against her. The two sides were well matched. Esti knew that it's really hard for her to defeat the Ice King. So she came up with a cowardly conspiracy. She pretended to attack Marie and her father, making the Ice King distracted. Taking the chance, she performs a sneak attack at the Ice King, making him badly injured. She intended to finish the Ice King, but Marie was there to cover him. <laughs> now you're even protecting each other. That's okay. Let me send both of you to hell! From now on, the powerful trident will forever be mine. No one will be able to prevent my power. <laughs> An evil person like you will never be worth owning the trident. What then? I'm holding it in my hand. Take it if you can. Marine was seriously injured, but she was also angry at the wickedness of the witch. So she still rushed there to fight back. At the moment when she touched the trident, the whole sea quaked. Huh? The trident shone right and flew towards Marie. Huh? Marie <laughs> held the trident tight and rushed there to finish Esther. <gasps> the cool and evil sea witch. Huh? Marine, the war has ended. Will you agree to come back with me? Not as a slave of mine, but as my wife. A part of my life. I agree. Hmm. Atlan the king also gave the throne to her daughter and the ice king. <laughs> the two seas combined as one. Under the rule of Marie and the ice king, every creature lived in peace and happiness forever after. <laughs>